Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. In this occasion, I'd like to deliver an analysis of the 2013 English curriculum in senior high school level, specifically for grade 10. And in this analysis, I will cover the rationale, the aims, the content, the learning experience, the evaluation, the conclusion. The first point that I analyzed is the rationale of the curriculum. The rationale of curriculum in senior high school is regulated on Permanikbun number 36, year 2018, focused on the third uh, rationale, which is changing mindset or mindset improvement. It reads that penguatan pola pembelajaran yang berpusat pada peserta didik. I can see that the focus of 2013 curriculum relies on the student. Therefore, the rationale of the curriculum is underpinned by Taylor's theory 1949 and the curriculum ideology of learner-centeredness brought by Richard 2001. The 2013 curriculum rationale states the individual needs of learners and the needs to develop learner strategies. The aim of 2013 curriculum is relevant with its rationale and one of which is the rationale from external factors that 2013 curriculum prepares the students to persist in global changes due to the rapid changes of knowledge, technology, education, and culture globally. The aim of the 2013 curriculum is also relevant to the response of UNESCO in GCED program, which is to give the learners the values, attitudes, behaviors that support responsible global citizenship, similar to the curriculum ideology brought by Richard 2001, which is social reconstructionism. The 2013 curriculum aimed to make the learners contribute to the society, nation, and global civilization. The social reconstructionism ideology is also stated in a document in Permanikbun number 36, year 2018. In relation to 2013 EFL curriculum, it helps the students to be active not only in the form of spoken language, but they have to be active in the written language as well. This is what UNESCO wants, that the teaching of English today should aim the learners to refer to use of international language, both orally or written, or as we know as multilingual education, according to UNESCO's website on language education. Next, I'll deliver the learning experiences in the 2013 EFL curriculum. As stated on its rationale, penguatan pembelajaran aktif mencari diperkuat dengan pembelajaran scientific. Unfortunately, I have to say I disagree with the approach of using scientific approach to English language learning. As J. 2015 states in his paper that based on a research paradigm, scientific methods can be applied only to natural phenomena that are stable and uniform across time, space, and context in a way that obviously and true to the human world of teaching and learning. Wahyudi and Sukiyadi 2015 they state that scientific approach could not be effectively applied in English language classroom but it somehow gave a positive contributions to the students participation and critical thinking. Talking about the EFL 2013 curriculum, the material thoughts suggest around interpersonal text, functional and transactional text, and language functions. This suggests that the 2013 curriculum has been underpinned by Richards and Rogers 1986 functional views in terms of the language theory, meaning that the English 2013 curriculum views the language as a vehicle for the expressions of functional meaning. I give a concrete example of the English syllabus of 10th grade senior high school in the first semester, specifically on KD 3.4 and 4.4 about descriptive text as you may see on this screen. Looking at the syllabus that has mentioned above, the 2010 curriculum employs a functional view, according to Richards and Rogers, 1986, by providing a basis for students to focus on learning and practicing the linguistic structures of communication events, which is descriptive text. Due to that reason, in terms of teaching theory, I must say that English 2013 curriculum employs a genre-based approach that is referring to language function and use, according to Sari and Wadani, 2018, evaluation of of 2013 English curriculum for senior high school. So the assessment of process and learning outcomes for senior high school is regulated on Permanikbun number 104, year 2014, that the assessments are conducted based on two principles, which are integrative and assessment of characters, according to Sari and Wadani 2018. Uh, based on my opinion, the evaluation for English 2013 curriculum is appropriate if we look closer at the first principle of the assessment on the curriculum document. Uh, that says that the assessment is integrative. 
This is relevant to the aim of the Tata curriculum. In addition, the evaluation of the points, knowledge, and skills in English Tata curriculum is related with the receptive and productive skill of English language. The evaluation of skills in English 2013 requires students to obtain speaking and writing mastery, while the evaluation of knowledge requires the students to obtain listening and reading skills. In conclusion, this paper has presented uh, several aspects and it has been shown that the rationale of the curriculum is relevant to the curriculum theory such as the theory proposed by Tyler in 1949 and the ideology of curriculum by Richards in 2001, which is learner centeredness. The aim of the 2013 curriculum also has relevancy to the ideology of curriculum which is social reconstructionism. And in addition to that, the aim of the 2013 curriculum has met the expected standards from the UNESCO's program GCEG to help changing learners' behavior to support responsible global citizenship. There is a point on the 2013 curriculum which is not relevant to the teaching English. Therefore, there should be a reevaluation of the design of the curriculum before it is implemented, especially on the learning approach. Lastly, the evaluation of the 2013 curriculum is appropriate to the teaching and learning English due to its relevancy of the assessment principles with the English learning. So here are the references. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.